Hola, I'm Herson Borrero, editor at Largest City and State, and we're sitting down today in this interview with a guy that I think our viewers know, our readers know, Adriano Espaillat, state senator from New York, from Manhattan. Last time we spoke, we were in the legislature. That's you right. guys were trying to get deals cut and deals made and just doing the legislation, job. Legislation, legislation. Right, okay, I, okay, you're right, you're right, they're right. That's, the legal term is legislation, but uh, it was an interesting session, yes, to say the least. And I know that we're going to be talking in particular about this National Journal did a, a whole piece, extensive piece on what do Dominican Americans, which I don't know, I'm gonna ask you about that first, what do Dominican, Dominican Americans really want? And it's interesting, you know, what the talk about Dominicans and what's expected, the level of expectation, political empowerment, economic power. But before we get to that particular article, um, I'm gonna ask you because we talked and there's, first of all, there's two things. One is whether you're gonna run again for Charlie Rangel's seat. You've done it twice, you've struck out. Do you go for a third time, do you take the chance? You may not be ready to say it now, but we did talk <laughs> off camera, so I'm gonna put you on the spot. You said you would come and sit down with me when you were deciding. I assume that this is not the interview for that, and that you would give us city and state the exclusive. So are you there yet, or are you well, still exploring? Well, first of all, I didn't strike out. I hit into a double play, okay? okay. But at least I hit okay. the ball, right? Okay. You know, I wasn't with, but you know, and so, you know, um, look, uh, you know, certainly, as you know, when you cover both races very extensively, they were both. You didn't like my coverage, by the way. Well, you know, <laughs> but but we're both adults. Well, we we, we right, can move right, forward. Right. And so, uh, you know, it was very tight, very tight races. I think you wrote a column, I Mangu, right? Meaning there I is mangu, a, there is you know, there is some level. Mangu of, being what the Dominicans make uh, from the plant from the platano. Yeah. Puerto Ricans make mofongo. Uh, Dominicans make mangu, and That's we good. love it. And it has a lot of potassium, right? And it, so, it, it does. So. Uh, you know, you will both agree that it was very contentious, very tight races, right? Yes. And so clearly that uh, provides uh, a path, at least, for me to consider in the future. And that, that I have not taken, I haven't made an official decision yet. I'm looking at it really hard. And soon, I think within the next few weeks, maybe I'll make a decision and I'll let you know. What will it be based on? It will be based on, you know, the numbers, obviously, how voters are feeling, uh, how, what are the issues that are, that are impacting in the community. Have they changed from four years ago to two years ago? I think uh, they have remained the same. Affordability has remained a, a major issue. Housing continues to be a major crisis, right? Uh, you know, uh, how, do, how are you able to uh, pay for your family to stay in the city of New York? When I came to the city of New York back in the 60s, it was like we came from the DR thinking that it was paved with gold streets, right? And opportunities was there. I remember, Herson, when the Daily News used to write in their uh, uh, employment uh, uh, area column, Dominicans wanted. In the classifieds. In the classifieds, yeah. I remember seeing that because my grandmother used to force me to read the papers to read English. And so that was written because of the work ethic and the job opportunities that the manufacturing and other industries provided. What kind of jobs were you looking at, or Dominicans uh, yeah. in general? Factory at? workers, both my grandparents were factory workers, my grandmother in the garment district, my grandfather for the Ray-Ban sun uh, glasses up in uh, Flushing, New York. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, uh, bodegas opened up, small businesses opened up, livery cars opened up. And now we have, you know, a group called Dow's, Dominicans on Wall Street. Right. You know, so we have gone from the, you know, manufacturing, uh, you know, uh, the uh, factory workers to now young people in Wall Street and professionals, lawyers, teachers, you know, you know, D as a Pulitzer Prize winner, people like that, right? So this major, major transformation. So, you know, what they want, what the community wants in general, the district, the, the 13th Congressional District, which has Dominicans, Puerto Ricans in East Harlem, African Americans, Africans in West uh, uh, Bronx, right. Jewish in uh, Northern Manhattan, you know, in, in Kingsbridge. It's New York. Yeah, it's New York. What do they want? Have the issues changed? Has it been a betterment in the issue? I think will drive my decision. You, you point accurately to that, but there's also something that I don't, I think should not get lost. The fact that if, in fact, you make history, or the Dominican that makes history being the first elected to the House of Representatives or to the Senate, you know, who knows, uh, will not only represent those in this particular district, That's we're talking correct. about 13th, but rather almost 9 million Dominicans back in the DR. Well, 
and, and other people uh, that feel that a voice like mine will be representative. No, but I'm saying just on the ethnic thought. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 yeah, but let me let me give you an example. Puerto Rico is is undergoing a major economic crisis yes. right now, right? Yes. You know, I, I have relationships with with the governor and some of the senators there, and with people. Alejandro Garcia Padilla, the current governor. You know, governor. they 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 talk to me about this. They see that if uh, if the voters eventually give me an opportunity to represent them, that I not only will be a voice for Dominicans or Jewish uh, or African Americans, yeah. but also Puerto Ricans here, and the crisis in Puerto Rico needs another voice that could be a voice that understands it, right? That understands that issue. Sure. Because it's a regional issue. You it's a Caribbean mean, issue. Exactly. I don't need to uh, a learning a curve. Learning curve. Uh, so, you know, this is very broad. It's not just one group. You, you're absolutely accurate about that, and, you, and, and of course, you've traveled to Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans, and there's a long history between both uh, countries, uh, nation, island, nation, as I call it. I wish it was a full nation. But having said that, you're, are you going on this trip that Governor Cuomo is uh, the... No, no, no. You're not going no, on no, it. I'm not going on it. I mean, I've been to Puerto Rico on several trips that have to do with government, but I'm not going on this well, trip, particular uh, why trip. Why aren't you going? Just, just, I'm, I'm putting no, this I don't mean, you know, I've been there, you know the issues. I, I know the issues. I it's mean, supposed the, to be the, a solidarity standing with Puerto Rico. The governor is putting it together, you know, I mean, I have, I'm, I have another uh, very important agenda during this right. time as okay. well. But, you know, I would love to go back at another time. This crisis is not going to disappear. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, right away. So maybe you know later, you know later on uh, uh, in the year, as, as I travel to the DR, we can all also go to the Puerto Rico. I got, I got to tell you, it's refreshing. Well, there's almost coming up. It's refreshing, which we're going to cover again, city and state. It's refreshing to hear you say that because what I'm hearing is, with all due respect to your colleagues, they're once again being used as props for the governor. Uh, he's going there. I'm saying this, Herson Borrero, Nara de Espallar. Uh, I remember the trip to the DR. Mm -hmm. It was October 16th, 17th we got yes, there of correct. last year. It was prior to the election. Correct. I remember, I'll just, I don't want to recant the whole thing, but in the DR, I remember it was an Italian restaurant. You guys broke, am I right? Yes. You guys you broke I, bread there. Yo. Right, you broke bread, you had conversations. You were standing there. It was uh, Senator Peralta, City Councilman Idani Rodriguez, um, he wasn't elected or re-elected yet. Guillermo Linares was there. Correct. But you stood there, and I waved goodbyes, and we said something, and you, you guys told me something. We were fooling around. When you left that, after the meetings that you had, that the mm -hmm. governor had, the breakfast in the morning mm -hmm. with, in, with, with political people, then uh, oh. the ex-president, Ana Fernandez, with the business no, was, people. Oh, yeah, with Ana Fernandez. Right, right, first. And, and the then the well. president at the Palacio Nacional at 10 o'clock. There was a press conference. At that press conference, you were there. There was a magnificent translator. Mm -hmm. He spoke in English and Spanish. Am I wrong? Did the governor say that there were trade deals, that he was going to do business with the Dominican Republic? And he even kidded around when it, the questions got serious. He turned around and he says, with my friends here, we're going to do the work for me so I can do it. Yeah, no, Did no, you no, leave no. the Dominican Republic with the impression that there were going to be trade deals? No, there is. The governor announced there a, a banking initiative to facilitate uh, trade between the Dominican Republic and New York State, right? Uh, and so that's what he announced. I propose uh, a uh, trade desk for the Caribbean for several reasons, because geographically the Dominican Republic is positioned just right in between Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico, Jamaica. Uh, the Dominican economy has been so shown some signs of solidifying itself and some good returns, it has potential. Although Puerto Rico has the infrastructure and the trained labor force, you know, we see what's happening with the, sure. the economy right now. So we got it, and Cuba opening up is gonna present uh, greater challenges to both Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, but I think also great opportunities in the field, in the, for example, in the tourism field, mm -hmm. people feel like, well, Cuba, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're living in Italy and they tell you, do you want to book a flight to Havana, Cuba, San Juan, Puerto Rico, or Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, most people say, wow, Havana, Cuba, you know, it's open. They'll go there. But maybe we can do, you know, uh, uh, packages where you can go to San Juan, Santo Domingo, or Punta Cana, right, and Havana. And so maybe the region could really benefit a Caribbean kind of yeah, yeah, that, you know, it, it, these these per perceived crises or challenges could also be great opportunities. And you've spoken of this too. Well, you know, I propose a trade desk for the Caribbean that will deal then with all these issues, including uh, tourism, trade, and, and you know, for the region. And and the governor's people know about my and they're considering it. Yes.
When you left the DR, and I remember, because we were going back to what he actually said, did he commit to try to work this out? Was it priority? His words were actually that. What's your takeaway? Did you guys, after we left, we said goodbye, you remained after the yeah. meal. What did you guys talk well, about? I think that his commitment was serious. Uh, and that he wants, because he's already done this in Washington, what he proposed. Uh, the, 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 uh, he worked with it in Washington with this particular banking initiative to promote trade. Uh, and he has the uh, zones here, the economic zones, and also he has these opportunities for startup businesses here. Uh, for Dominican businesses or other businesses that want to come from any part of the world. So I think that that's a good potential formula. Uh, you know, it's been less than a year since we were there, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah, it was October 16. And this is something that needs oh, time to be put together. But, is there I, anything? Uh, is there a rough draft? Is there anything? There is a model there that, that, that has been floated, but nothing concrete yet. But I hope that by the end of the year, so there'll be something concrete. He goes to Puerto Rico now. He'll be there Labor Day weekend. It's a solidarity thing. Puerto Rico right now is in debt almost $73 billion. Yes. Do we need to see another show of salary? If he was, no, I well, mean, I, I think I, from I, what I gather, I don't see it. What I gather, and I'm not a part of the trip officially, but what I gather from the trip is that, for example, he's bringing the controller, Scott Stringer, who has, uh, you know, the pension funds and and the, the investment mechanism, perhaps, to, mm -hmm. to inject uh, dollars into the Puerto Rican economy. Let me remind you, uh, Herson, that Punta Cana, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the the the, 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 main the, the the main tourist destination in the Caribbean and Latin America right now was mm -hmm. built by a guy named Tech Keel, a big labor lawyer, right. and by Frank Rainieri, a visionary in the tourism industry in the Dominican Republic right. and folks here with New York City pension fund money. And, and, and you know it's been, but but it, that's a, you know you're comparing well, you know you know what I'm saying you're, is you're that comparing Mangu and, and Mofongo here. Well, you know what I'm saying is that that the 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 controller and certainly the fiduciary responsibility of the controller should be foremost, and the return that the pension holders have should be the most uh, important uh, factor when when people make investments. But the controller has a potential uh, uh, opportunity to invest sure. in areas that are reasonable and practical and give a good return and can motivate the, the Puerto Rican economy. I know this is unfair to you, not going to enter, but do you do, you do understand the situation, which is surprising that you should, wouldn't it have been more practical? This is a federal issue. Correct. To meet with the entire delegation of New York State and Congress, that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to go, because with all the respect to Scott Tring and all the money that people's money, there's limitations of what he can do. Uh, and I don't see, see, you know what I would be impressed? If I saw Andrew Cuomo with a billion dollar check. Okay, well that's impressive for anybody. Okay, but, but he ain't doing know, that. You know, but listen, there's not just Scott Stringer, there are business, business leaders that are traveling. But also let me say this to you, yes, it is a federal issue and there have been letters and, and advocacy. I've, right. been, I've been part of the, the process uh, uh, to ask the, the, the delegation, the New York delegation and Congress to really help out in this way. And a billion dollar check is of course, the best answer to many ills, including the city of New York. Well, he did it for <laughs> Buffalo. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I think that he's going there. I think he's, uh, you know, going in good faith. And okay. let's see what the results are. Yeah, show me the money is all I say. But, okay, what do Dominican, I hate, I, I'm going to say Dominicans. What Dominicans, what this American stuff, the hyphen thing, it bothers me. And, you know, that's on a whole nationalistic level. Not that I have anything, but we're Americans already, what people don't get. So, having said that, what do Dominicans want today in 2015? According to the not that you speak for everyone, no, no, but no. you have a According sense. to the survey put out by the National Journal, uh, you know it's very interesting. In many cases, it's similar to what other Latinos want. In some cases, not right. Uh, so, for example, their main concern are jobs, and that comes, I think, uh, as a result of a real uh, practical reality, which is that although Dominicans have shown a higher level of academic uh, achievement in terms of uh, higher education, they still fall under uh, other Latinos or other similar groups with regards to income. And so that triggers a bunch of things. Rent, for example. We are renters for the most part. We're not owners. owners. And so when the rent goes up and we're not making enough money, you know, we get evicted, we get, uh, you know, doubling up in, in apartments, and that creates a hardship in the community. But at the same time, you know, young people, 28,000 Dominicans in the CUNY system, the biggest group sure. of any group. Mm -hmm. If you go to SUNY, they're all over SUNY and the private colleges. And so there is an effort there for the young people to 
get the education and potentially the next generation is going to make a little bit more money and get us out of that you know situation so uh, jobs is number one they rank education as second they rank uh, housing at third and immigration is fourth because now Dominicans are second third fourth generation, generation. Many of them are already U.S. citizens. Over 50% of them in, in, in the country are U.S. citizens by birth already. And the other 50%, one of the highest naturalization rates in the country, if not the highest. So many of them, I would say a good chunk of them, are already either legal residents, have become citizens, naturalized citizens, or were born here. So immigration is an issue when it, as, as it pertains to deportations, family reunification, because some of them still have their kids back home and they're bringing them back in here. They, they want to reunite with the family as quickly as possible. But it's not longer necessarily uh, the, the, top. The, the green card. You know, it's not the top uh, agenda, according to this particular survey. Well, there's a, there's a New Yorker running for president, a Republican guy, who thinks otherwise. And he was, I, I see that. Yes, I saw him in the know, news the other day. <laughs> what, do you think of this, what do you think of this crazy man? You know, the, I mean, there's space for everyone, but... That's I think he, he will... Uh, he has created a great problem for the Republican Party, which is that 30% of the base is supporting him, or at some point it will be close to 30%. And so he will hold them hostage, or he has even threatened to run as an independent. And so this is, in my opinion, a stick-up artist, right? As you call it in the Bronx and me in Washington Heights, right? So Donald Trump is a stick-up artist. a stick-up artist, yeah. With a lot of money in his pocket and gold hair. <sighs> if... If you don't, I'm going to get back to what should be on the political agenda, what you explained everything on a social economic level, the attainment of education, all of that, immigration issues. The political end, is there a mollero there? Is there a muscle that is, Absolutely. that there is? You feel it? How is it manifested? Because I don't you. think there's been a knockout and punch no, by well, Dominican. You know, I mean, we're getting there, but, you know, I think that it takes, you know, we still haven't seen a Latino mayor in the city of New York. You know? We haven't seen a Puerto Rican one either. Exactly. So, look. Or a female. Or a female, for that matter. So we're still in progression, right? From the David Dinkins days in 1998, was it? 96? Yes. You know, we haven't seen, uh, you know, a minority mayor. He took office in 89. 99, yes. So, you know, this city is still in transition, if you may, right? What many consider to Political be... Political transition? Uh, well, uh, what many consider to be a, a majority-minority community, a city, is still in transition with regards to... Uh, lead, uh, leadership, where leadership is placed, both elected and appointed, and so we're still in transition. But I think we're moving forward as a city in general, not just for Latinos or Dominicans. No, in general. But if if you take a look, I, I take a look at my district, right, the one that I originally represented, the 72nd Assembly District. When I first got elected there in the 1996. People who got elected there, uh, Brian Murtagh and some of the others that represented the district before me, were less than 4,000 votes. You know, you can mm -hmm. easily get elected with 2,001 mm -hmm. vote, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, anemic, right, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the democracy, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if you go to the Bronx to some places, most places, mm -hmm. you will see now that the assembly districts still elect folks with under, f uh, even in contested races, under 4,000 votes. Now, you know, 18 years later, we're in double digits. Okay. We're pushing 12, 13. And turn out. Uh, yeah, turn out. I want to be at Scott Stringer's old district level, which is one of the top voting ADs, ADs in, the, in the state, uh, which is like 16, 18, 20, right? We're at 12, and a good day we could hit maybe 14. We're not far from, you know, if we continue to push hard, we can get to that 16, 18. I think that makes us... That's why you see people like the governor and the mayor going to the neighborhood to look, ask for the vote. My exit question, because we've run out of time and I find this very engaging, you gotta come back uh, when you make the decision or we'll before. Exit question, Bill de Blasio. You're smiling already. <laughs> well, it's, give it's give me, because you're, you're, you're a city boy, man. You, man. you know, a Dominican, you're a real New Yorker. <laughs> What's the deal with him? How do you feel? How do you think Dominicans are dealing well, with him? Well, you know, I think that, look, Bill de Blasio, uh, and I worked with him very closely to get uh, universal pre-K money. Some people may not recognize that now, right? But if you're a parent and now you're your child... So you made an investment in him. Yeah, no, no, no. You know, I think, you know, I didn't support him for mayor. You know, I went with, I supported Billy Thompson. But, you know, I did support him in the general. Uh, but, you know, he, he started off well. He did the uh, universal pre-K money. Right. He just did two uh, rent freezes for tenants 
I, I don't know if anybody has computed the savings in the pockets of working class people when you say that the New York City Rent Guidelines Board has not increased uh, 4 percent or 5 or 6, 7 percent for at least for tenants. Easy. Are we doing well, poorly, or lousy? I think he needs to make improvements. That's not in your line of, you know, it's not an A, B, C, D answer. I think he needs to make improvements. I think he needs to continue to work with us. I, I'm open to work with the mayor of the city of New York. He is our leader. You know, I think he needs to listen to our community. Maybe is he better. listening to our community? I don't think he, uh, he's listening to the Dominican community or, or many other communities that are that want to be listened to. And I think sometimes that happens in government because, uh, unfortunately, you know, you you get into a cocoon and. And, and you know you you feel that the bubble is the answer when the answer is outside the bubble. I mean, so, when was the last time you talked to the uh, mayor? We, we spoke recently. I forget if it's uh, during the summer. We had uh, a brief, short conversation. Yeah, but you didn't invite him to that uh, breakfast that you have with the Dominican Day Parade, and you invited the governor. No, it was an open invitation to everybody. And he just decided not to come. That was his choice. For City and State TV, I'm Herson Borrero, Adriano Espaillat, State Senator. Good seeing you, Adriano. Thank you so much.